I met you a few years ago at a show in Northern Maine. And I always tell this story when you're coming to town that I was on stage introducing you with the, with my coworker and I had on a tank top and a denim shirt over it. And the fair director from the audience starts yelling, take off your shirt. And everyone else, I do remember that. Everyone else was doing it, so I kind of flashed the 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 shirt that was the denim shirt that was on top. And when I walked off the stage, you tucked a dollar bill into the waistband of my pants, <laughs> which was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That's really, what your humor is all about? It's it's about everyday life, isn't it? Well, yeah, and I found out over the years that that's what people want. Listen, you know, I don't do political stuff, or I don't, you know, anything like that because. No matter how good the joke is, you, you alienate 50% of the audience right there. Exactly. So, and I always feel like my job is to make you feel better than you did when, when you leave. That Hopefully you feel better than when you got there. That's the point, right? Yeah. Yeah. People want to hear stuff they can relate to, you know, like whether it's, you know, snoring or being married for a long time or, you know, you know, just every, I always learn, I've learned this over the years on the road that we all do the exact same stuff it's just with different accents <laughs> exactly exactly now who is your favorite comedian oh god <laughs> um i think probably steve martin yeah even though he doesn't hardly do it anymore I, I, he was he was very instrumental his his comedy was very instrumental in getting me started doing this very creative and very physical at times yeah tell us about the neighbor Oh, the neighbor uh, was really fun to do. Uh, I got a call from it was written by the guys who wrote Saw Four, and uh, so they called, and I was like, I'm not a big slasher fan, right. you know, I, I don't like that kind of stuff. But uh, he was telling me about this part, and I said, You know who I am, right? I go, I'm like the goofy sitcom dad, and he goes, Yeah, he goes, That's exactly what I want, and then you're going to scare the hell out of people, and. <laughs> I had more fun doing that than I've had on any single project. What can we expect from your show this week? Oh, it's going to be really fun. Uh, we're talking about everything from uh, my experience on Dancing with the Stars to uh, having my knee replaced, getting a kidney stone. We're going through menopause together. And, uh, <laughs> you know cell phones and my hatred of them. Uh, it's, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't like them anyway, uh, especially those like emoticons yeah the little pictures yeah because uh, i got burned on that one time a buddy of mine sent out a kind of a group text to all his friends about that his mother-in-law was in the hospital and was not doing well at all and so i went down and found one of those little praying hands right and when i sent it the hands started clapping <laughs> so you know it's like hey my mother-in-law's gonna die yay yay you know, <laughs> Like now, nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the rest of the text was not about his mother-in-law, but more about what a jackass I was. <laughs> That's, before I let you go, I have to ask: How was your experience on Dancing with the Stars? Did you enjoy it? Uh, every minute of it, Good. even the pain. <laughs> when I got done, I realized that I had danced six hours a day, seven days a week for thirteen weeks without a day off. Wow. Yeah, and I was fifty-seven at the time. Right. I realized that fifty-seven-year-old men are not designed to dance six hours a day, seven <laughs> days a week for thirteen weeks. Especially if they We're haven't been doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're designed to dance once a year, drunk at a wedding. That's, That's right. 